Welcome on into the Wolverine Recruiting Show. Clayton Safey here with EJ Holland and Tim Verghese. We're going to break down the latest surrounding Michigan football recruiting. We're going to talk about Jim Harbaugh, some of those NFL rumors that are popping up, uh, as well as a potential contract renegotiation at Michigan. If he were to stay, we'll talk about how that has impacted recruiting, if at all. And then we'll talk to Tim uh, as well about some of the All-American Bowl stuff. He was down there in San Antonio last weekend. But EJ, let's start with what everybody's talking about surrounding Michigan football. Jim Harbaugh obviously drawing some interest from NFL teams, most uh, notably the Raiders, who the people that are watching, EJ's wearing a Raiders beanie, I think, to just troll. But uh, we'll we'll get his thoughts on that. Um, and then potentially at Michigan. I mean, we've talked a lot about on our team shows about how uh, he's going to receive a raise. You know, you assume he returns to Michigan. Uh, definitely deserves it after taking a pay cut last season after winning the Big Ten this year. So, uh, EJ, with guys coming in, trickling in this weekend for some visits, the Michigan staff also set to hit the road next week uh, as the dead period will be lifted. Where do things stand in terms of kind of the rumors floating around there and how they've affected the Wolverines on the trail? Yeah, I think all Michigan fans are, are Raiders fans this weekend. So It's true. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll just have to see how you know that kind of plays out with the uh, NFL playoffs. But as far as – uh, Harbaugh himself and recruiting, he's taking it business as usual. He took part in recruiting meetings last night. We're recording this on Wednesday. So Tuesday night, they had recruiting meetings to kind of plan out what they were going to do on the road and talk about the guys that were coming in for visits, what they had going on. And he was, you know, in Schembechler Hall leading the way in that charge. And then he set some visits too. I know he's uh, has a firm date to see Todd 2023 offensive tackle target Luke Montgomery. He has a tentative date to go see five-star offensive lineman Josh Connerly up in Seattle. He has a DMV swing plan to go see guys like Nicholas Harbour and Jason Moore, both top 100 recruits. So he's planning to hit the road. He's, take, again, taking it business as usual. So that's on, on Harbaugh's end, on recruits' end. I haven't been the one to ask, you know, parents or recruits, Hey, what do you think about these Harbaugh rumors? I just think it's poor form. But a, a few recruits obviously have brought it up in interviews. And uh, obviously as well, I think recruits across the country kind of live on the Internet. So they see the rumors. They know they're out there. Everybody does this, at this point. So I, I don't think it has a major effect to where it's really, really hurting Michigan. I think the longer it goes on, the more it does affect Michigan. But right now, I mean, guys are still coming in for visits. Uh, recruits have continued to talk highly of Michigan. Uh, and we go through this kind of every year. Every year there's NFL rumors. Last year was, it was, will Jim Harbaugh even keep his job? So we go through this every year and it always turns out fine. So I'm not too concerned from the recruits I've talked to. I don't think they're too concerned. I know Tim just talked to Dante Moore. I've talked to Dante here and there as well. And Dante's not making a decision anytime soon. Luke Montgomery's not making a decision anytime soon. These are top tier one guys, you know, that aren't in a rush to make decisions. I think they'll let things play out. And I, I would expect this to be done fairly soon, like, you know, before the Super Bowl, obviously, which is just, you know, weeks away. So I, I'm not, again, I'm not very concerned about it right now. I think some people want to blow it up and say this is really hurting recruiting, you know, from, just boots on the ground. I, I don't think it's having too much an effect, of an effect. Of course, recruits are going to bring it up. Of course, it's on their mind. But right now, it's not going to hinder Michigan. Michigan's coming off the college football playoff. It's the University of Michigan. Uh, it's always going to have appeal. And I think Michigan is still very much in line to land a top five class nationally. And at the end of the day, I would actually be a little surprised if Harbaugh left to the NFL. Um, I think he has a pretty good thing going at Michigan. And I think recruits kind of know that there's stability there despite the rumors. Definitely. I think it would be surprising at this point. And, and we have gone through this many times. I mean, there was one even mid season in 2019, there was some report that he was eyeing an exit and then he quickly came out and shot those down. So he's played it both ways where he shoots it down immediately. He's also ignored it at times as well, which seems to be what he's doing now. Um, and it really has worked out for Michigan. It hasn't affected him even last year, as you mentioned, when things were so uncertain there in the months of 
December and January, really, for, for half of both of those months after the season and then uh, even after the new year last year. So we'll see how that plays out. But as far as, you know, we know, it seems like, uh, you know, things are going on as usual. Uh, Tim, let's talk about the All-America Bowl. Uh, your takeaways from being at a few practices down there, from seeing the game as well, and your thoughts on some of the Michigan guys there. Yeah, so Michigan was supposed to have uh, a pretty solid haul out there. You know, Darius Clemens was expected to be out there. Zeke Berry was expected to be out there. Uh, Tyler Morris was expected to be out there. And then, you know, five-star offensive line target, Con Josh Connerly was expected to be out there. Unfortunately, due to COVID, uh, Barry, Clemens, and uh, Morris was already injured. But none of those three were able to participate. But uh, Michigan quarterback signee Jaden Denegal, due to the co some of the COVID, uh, um, not opt-outs is the right word, but, you know, the guys who had to sit out because of COVID, uh, Denegal was a late invite and came in on, on Wednesday. So I was able to get eyes on, on Jaden Denegal for the first time. And, uh, and watch a good amount of practice of uh, Josh Connerly. Um, so I guess we can start there. Michigan five-star offensive line target Josh Connerly was out in um, San Antonio all week. Um, had a somewhat up and down week overall. He started the week off really, really strong. I happened to come in on Thursday, and that was just that just happened to be his worst day of practice um, of the week. He, um, I guess one thing overall from the week that kind of popped out is, you know, he's one of the more athletic offensive linemen at the event. Um, you know, I think his overall athletic profile really, really impresses a lot of people. He's closer to 6'4 than he is 6'5 or even 6'6. Six, six. Um, but, you know, he does project to play offensive tackle at the next level. I don't think you're going to see him really slide inside just because tackle is what he's played and he's good at it. Um, he, he, he handles, you know, handles his own against speed rushers really, really well. Um, he, he is so quick, um, just kind of in a phone booth that he, he pretty much, you know, not has his way, but, you know, is done really well against quicker edge rushers where he even has said is he's got to get stronger before he gets to college. Um, he really struggled, I think a bit with, uh, power rushers, specifically guys kind of pushing on the outside or inside, not just straight up bull rushing him. Um, and the way come, when they come at him at an angle off the edge, um, and, you know, convert some of that speed to power is kind of when he struggles a little bit, especially, um, I think a couple guys he struggled with were some of those power rushers at the event. So, um, overall, you know, I think overall he did have a overall good week. He closed the week off on Friday, winning the Anthony Munoz Lineman of the Year Award, which is which was an impressive honor. Um, and you could see, you know, he as as on up and down his on field performance was off the field. He just made a big impression on everybody. The whole um, the the whole every participant on the East and West side like exploded when uh, when he won the award. They were all really happy for him. Um, and he's a guy who's made a big a positive impression on a lot of people. Um, and uh, just a very good kid from all accounts. And so you know, off the field, there's nothing really to worry about. There on the field, there's some development that needs to go down. Um, and uh, before he really enrolls on campus, but that's good. You know, he's not planning on even getting to campus until you know the summer anyway. So he's got a couple months to. After this week, he knows what he needs to work on, get back in the lab. And, um, you know, as EJ and I have talked about, he's never played competition like he faced this last week coming from, you know, Seattle. So, um, you know, this was his first taste of league competition. And, you know, overall, I think he would even say himself he did pretty good. You know, there's obviously things to work on. But, um, you know, it's going to be interesting to kind of follow his development the next couple of weeks, next couple of months. Um, on the recruiting side of things, you know, it's still kind of, playing it by ear at this point. He's pushing his decision beyond the Feb signing period. Um, he's expected to make official visits to, to Oregon, to Washington, to USC, and to Oklahoma. Um, you know, there could be another school in the mix there, um, but as it stands, you know, those are his official visits, and that's really all he's got left. He wants to make his official visits and then make a decision. Michigan already held him on an official visit back uh, during the season, so they're not going to get him back. And he wants to try and make an unofficial back to Michigan, but it's not looking likely that that's going to happen. Uh, Jim Harbaugh is, is, like EJ said earlier, Jim Harbaugh is expected to go in home with him later this week. Um, or not this week, but, you know, later this month, more than likely. So um, that'll be something to watch and kind of see, you know, what, how much work Harbaugh is able to do. Um, I, I will say, you know, a source told me while I was down there, you know, if, if, situ if the situation was different, if, you know, he didn't live in, Seattle, where it's so hard to get to Ann Arbor, um, he would be a Wolverine. Um, and, you know, there, there is strong indication that, you know, USC and Michigan are his top two schools of his top six. Ultimately, it's just going to come down to location, comfort, and, uh, you know, I think 
at this point, USC may provide a little more of that right now than, than Michigan does. Um, and then the other one was obviously Jaden Denigal. Um, nothing really too, nothing too much to write home about. He was a late invite. Um, he was kind of somewhat of an odd man out in this among the six quarterbacks. Um, you know, he's a big physical frame. I think that's the one thing that really impressed me seeing him live. Um, there's a lot that you can build on with his frame right now. There's so much you can uh, add to him. I think from a weight standpoint, from a overall athleticism standpoint, there's just a lot there right now. Um, so I'm, I'm actually really intrigued to kind of follow how much, um, you know, how much work he does in the weight room and what he looks like after a year or two in the weight room. Um, from an on-field play perspective, there's just, a, there's just there's, it's a lot of raw tools right now and there's a lot of things that need to be work, worked on. Uh, I think I wrote it last, the way I wrote it last week was, you know, I wouldn't expect him to take the quarterback room by storm or anything here in the next year or two. Um, you know, he's going to be a longer developmental guy. He understands that. His, his main excitement about getting to Michigan is just learning as much as he can from Jim Harbaugh and Josh Gaddis and Matt Weiss. Um, he just wants to absorb a lot of things. You know, he's, he even said in California, a lot of his work has been post snap, but he still like is working on understanding, you know, how the play develops pre snap and, you know, and, and even furthering his mental understanding of the game overall. So those are, those are things he's going to have to work on. I mean, again, I wouldn't expect him to be an early impact contributor at Michigan. If he does contribute, it's going to be later in his career after a couple of years of development, after a couple of years of, of just learning how to play quarterback even more, sharpening some of his technique. Um, he's got a long, uh, Charles Power said it best, but he's got a long winding uh, wind up, you know, and uh, and that's going to be need to be fixed. I think some of his overall mechanics need to be need to be tweaked a little bit too. So, you know, it's going to take a couple years before he's e- even in a position to have some type of contribution at Michigan. But you know, if he's able to get to that point, there is a lot there if uh, if he develops and you know is willing to put in the work to develop. Definitely. Um, and, and I think Michigan's quarterback room is set up nice enough to give him that luxury to to have a couple of years before he could be potentially thrown in to the fire. Uh, finally, Tim, let's end with uh, some of your takeaways from the combine down there that was on Friday. Underclassmen coming in, guys that are really elite in their class that have invites potentially for next year or have accepted them already. Uh, what were your you know, who were some of the top guys first, I guess, that were there? And what were some of your takeaways from uh being down there yeah it was a good mix of uh national talent out there um you know i think the the names to to know for sure were uh 2024 saline uh quarterback is it saline saline quarterback saline saline yeah. quarterback saline quarterback cj carr uh he ended up winning mvp of the whole combine as a 2024 with uh over 600 at least 600 uh, you know, other uh, attendees at the event. So really, really impressive stuff from the Michigan native. Um, you know, Michigan is still in a good spot in that recruitment um, from a recruiting standpoint. But, I mean, you know, just he really impressed a lot of people. There were some downfield throws he made where, you know, he, he put it in spots only his receiver could get it for 2024 to, to be able to do that kind of, those kinds of things against competition with wide receivers he's never played against before, really throwing the random wide receivers against random DBs. So he wasn't, you know, he wasn't playing in a system where he was really comfortable and, you know, he was still like, you know, throwing some, some, some lasers. So really, really impressive stuff from him. Came way impressed with him. Uh, 2023 Michigan O-line targets, Sam Pendleton and Logan Reichert were there. Uh, Sam impressed a lot of people with his overall frame. Um, really strong. He's a mauler. He's good. He has, he's played all over the line in high school. Um, and he's projecting to slide inside at the next level. So, you know, he got some reps at the interior, had an overall pretty strong day. Nothing, nothing crazy to write home about. He's a bit of a mauler and, you know, these type of situations, um, you know, for a guy who plays really aggressive, um, especially going up against all these types of competition, you have a chance to make a splash and, and he impressed in some reps, but obviously, you know, he's, this is the first time going up against really national co- competition, um, Logan Riker had a strong day. He's he's bigger than Pendleton. He's he's just one of the bigger players that were out there. He stands about six six, over three forty pounds. I've heard upwards of three sixty. I've heard as low as three thirty. His weight's kind of all over the place. No one really knows for sure. But no matter what it is, he holds the weight really well. If that's I think you know talking to a couple of people who who got eyes on him. I've seen him before, but talking to a couple of people who saw him for the first time, they were also really just impressed on how well he holds the weight. Um. You know, it's it's not it's not a bad three forty. It's not, um, you know, there's not there's not a whole lot of weight in bad areas on his body. He just carries the weight really really well. 
Um, and then he had a strong day in performance. He came up with multiple pancakes and one on ones. Uh, tested really well. He told me that last this time last year he ran a five one at the combine um, or at a, a testing event. Um, and so this offseason, his goal is to crack a sub five forty, which you get for a guy as big as he is at six six or three forty pounds to even crack sub five is is crazy. Um, I think his short area quickness is is really impressive for a player his size. Um, and again, his long quickness too, obviously. Um, so he's going to be one to to keep an eye on both their high Michigan targets. Pendleton's closing in on a decision next month. Uh, Michigan, he st- he told me last month, he told me again this month, Michigan is still at the top for him. Um, they really made a big impression on him for when he visited for the Ohio State game. And he said there's not a whole lot that could knock Michigan off. But that being said, Clemson's supposed to host him for a visit at the end of January, which, you know, Clemson hasn't offered yet, but they could change that on this visit. So Clemson's going to be a school to watch. Um, Michigan really got in early with Pendleton. Um, and, you know, that... It's a good thing if it if it winds up in a commitment next month, but at the same time, you know, schools across the country are taking notice of of Pendleton now after his breakout junior year, and so more schools are kind of entering the mix for him. Could push him off of making a commitment this early. Could try and you know pressure him into into holding out a little bit for his decision. So that's going to be something to kind of watch. But as it stands, I've, I have a Mich- a prediction in for Michigan at the Wolverine, uh, and I still feel good about pr- that prediction. So. It could be a tight couple of weeks just to kind of see if Michigan can hold off a late Clemson push and, you know, push from other schools. But, you know, keep an eye on that one. Um, Rikert, I feel good about Michigan. I'm not close to putting a prediction in yet, but I feel good about where Michigan stands along with a couple other schools. Um, he's close friends with Michigan target Caden Green, which uh, always bodes well. You know, those two haven't explicitly talked about playing together at the next level, but it's certainly an option. They both have similar offers, similar top schools lists. So, those two, um, you know, had strong weeks and also high Michigan targets. Um, another Michigan target that had a good week was uh, or a good performance was Dry Boodle. Um, it's a somewhat the underclassmen combine is traditionally a slow track, so the forty times are never accurate. You know, the second fastest time that was recorded on on Friday was a four six by, and and we saw multiple players there that we've seen run four, four sub four five forties before. So, um, you know, it was a bit of a slow track. He wound up running somewhat. He said he round up someone, someone like a four seven, uh, four seven one, but a lot of people came away and like he turned a lot of heads in his forty times. So I don't think that times accurate. He is closer to a four five or a low four six kid than a four seven. But um, you know, from the eye test perspective, he he blew a lot of people away with just how fast he was. Um, and uh, Michigan's still in a good spot there, along with a couple other Big Ten schools. His older brother played at Nebraska, so Nebraska's going to be in there, even though they haven't offered yet. They remain in communication. Northwestern's a school that's made a move recently. Um, a couple of regional schools, Kentucky um, is an SEC school that's monitoring. <clears throat> and obviously the Miamis and Florida states and Floridas of the world are also checking in on him. But Michigan's in a good spot. He hasn't visited since the summer, but he's looking forward to hopefully making a return trip this offseason. And obviously it's one one thing to watch for me would be how high is he on Michigan's board? Would they accept his commitment at this point? Or are they kind of holding out for some bigger fish at, at DB right now. But those are the couple of Michigan guys that really uh, caught my eye this at the combine. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty much the list. Lots of great stuff right there. So for continued Michigan football recruiting coverage, head to the Wolverine.com. Both these guys all over there with all the scoop on the Wolverines on the recruiting trail. $1 gets you an entire year of our premium coverage over there. So uh, go check it out at the Wolverine.com.